Good day, this is Prophetess Wendy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be discussing a very, very interesting topic. It says, how do we please one another in marriage? Amen. How do we please one another in marriage? <laughs> I, will, I know a lot of things comes to mind. Someone will say, when you buy me chocolates, I'm going to be happy. Hallelujah. Someone says, I don't need chocolates. I don't need chocolates to be happy in marriage. <laughs> Someone says, you know, we want different things because we are different and couples are not the same. That's why it's not always advisable to say, uh, compete with that other couple from that side. Amen. Because they are not you. You and your husband are completely two different people that came together and made one by God. But you are not the same as me and the pastor. Amen. We might be of the same age, but my marriage is not the same as your marriage. Amen. That's why you find that in some of the marriage, you'll find the husband is educated, but in some of the marriages, the woman that is educated. Why? Because we are not the same. And as individual, we are not pleased by one and the same thing. There are people who are pleased in marriage when a man buys them flowers. Amen. There are people who are pleased when a man uh, goes to, goes with them to the church, you know, whether you're born again or you're not born again, the fact that you support them in everything that they do. But the most important thing here that makes one, that, that, that makes people happy or that, make, that can help people to please one another is to respect one another. Amen? How do you mean by respect? First of all, as a couple, you need to understand that you come from different backgrounds. Amen? Where I come from, you might find that I'm, I'm used to my parents putting the shoes under the under the bed. But when I meet my husband, I find that there are shelves where you must put shoes. Hallelujah. Cannot say, I'm putting uh, my shoes uh, under the bed. Amen. While my husband says, uh, we must put it uh, under under the shelf. And, uh, and another thing that I will start by saying, I will say that Christ is the head of the family. Uh, uh, men submit under Christ. We as women submit under under men. And when the Bible says in the book of um, Esther, it says every man must have authority over his household, meaning that a man must have authority in his own house, hallelujah, not to abuse, but to give direction into the family. Once you have married us, we still want to know where to from here, amen. Yes, you spoke to us, you gave us a vision that you want to marry us. Yes, now I'm married, I'm in your yard. Where to from here, amen. We need to know as women, where are you taking me as a woman? You also say, I also want to know, baby, where are you taking me as a woman? Hallelujah. <laughs> because that will also make me happy. But one thing I can say for sure, what makes us or what makes us to be happy in marriage is when we are able to serve one another and also to respect one another. By now, we should know your husband by now. Like myself, I'll give you this example. Things that makes people to fight, it's very simple things. The things that take away people's joy, it's very simple things. The Bible says, do not keep records of wrongs. You know, there are women in marriage, they are still upset. You remember that day when you introduced me to your mother, you took side with your mother, but now it's been 10 years. But each and every time when you have an argument, you want to bring it up. No, let it go, men of God, because those are the things that will make you not to be happy in your marriage. Amen. Sometimes as a man, you find that you're still holding a grudge. Men are not like us. They're not targeted. Amen. To say when we get to that funeral, you fail to give me one, two, three. Hey, you spend too much time with your friends and stuff like that. You find that a man is still holding a grudge against a woman. But the Bible says, Love keeps no records of wrong, meaning in both both of us, we have no right to keep records of wrongs. And the Bible says, remembering wrongs can break up a friendship. Amen. Let me say this. If you keep on remembering the bad things, sorry about that. It's my husband calling me. <laughs> you can see what I wrote then. My love, you can't see anything. He's calling to check on me. But I will continue <laughs> because you're more important. Okay, it's more important. Let me pause. I'll get I'll come back to you. Let me just pause. Ne? Let me just pause. Thank you for understanding. You know, it, we, 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 we are forever calling one another. I was just calling me to say that it will be 30 minutes late. Hallelujah. That's also important. It makes us happy in marriage. You know, when you call us, don't just leave the house and not tell your wife where you are. Amen. It's good when you leave the house, you tell your wife, Mama, I'm going to this particular place. Hallelujah. Don't just wake up in the morning as a man. You run. You don't even tell your husband, where you, your wife, where you're going. Or as a woman, don't tell your husband where you're going. You just go disappear here for the whole day the children wake up and ask us mommy where's daddy 
I don't know. Hallelujah. <laughs> because yes, you did not tell us anything. We need to give guidance and vision to the children because they learn from us. So what am I saying? Communication is key in each and every uh, marriage. Must always call one another. You know, my husband calls me, he texts me. Also, thank you, your man. You know, sometimes you spend time with your husband. You can't find anything good that he has done. Obviously, I believe there is a law. That, there, there could be a law that you see he's doing wrong, but there could be few that is doing right. Try and check what is it that my husband is doing right? What is it that my wife is doing right? Then when we are sitting during the day, write a message. Just, you know what? I want to appreciate you for one, two, three. Those are the things that make us happy as women. Those are the things that make us to rejoice. Those are the things that make us to be pleased as women, to know that my husband is thinking of me you go to work for the whole day don't even call me you know you don't even check on me how was your day you know sometimes we have a rough day at work your boss is mistreating you is doing one two three but to receive that phone call it will bring a smile it's a smile it's like it brings life into a person you know a person that is happy you don't even have to write on whatsapp or on youtube or on social media or on twitter to say i'm very happy I'm very happy. No, no, no. People can see. Hallelujah. By looking at you, they can see well, this woman is happy. Why? Because it reflects what is on the inside. And that can only happen when we respect one another. We continue to communicate with one another. Some of the things that makes people, you know, to break up is because you find that there's lack of communication. Whenever you talk, please call bread. Please call the kids are sick. Please call what time are you coming home? You know, there's nothing to talk about. Why can't you talk about last night what did you do last night you made love last night wasn't it not nice even if it was not nice matter to appreciate you know to tell your man or to tell your woman to say you know what baby i thank you for what you did last night i thank you for one two three those are the small things that make us happy find something even when we cook we put to my salt you know uh, to try and tell us in a nice way don't say you don't even know how to cook no 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 that's not how you speak to a woman the bible says a gently answer it's always good, you know, it's always good to give a gently answer. I'll give you this example. Uh, this other day I left, my husband is a PhD student. So I left him here, was busy with his research and everything. Then I went to work. Then he took leave to say, I'm, I'm, I just want to keep myself busy. Hallelujah. Then when I left him here at home, he calls me on my way back at home. He says, Mama, what are we eating today? Hallelujah. And I'm thinking, this man is at home. <laughs> I left him for the whole day at home, but he's asking me, what are we eating for today? Hallelujah. But I gave a gently answer to say, you know what, Papa, when I get home, I will see what I can cook when I get there. Say, hurry, hurry so that you can cook for me. Hallelujah. And then another thing, you need to know your husband. Like myself, you know, by my standard, when I met the pastor, he was a bachelor. He used to clean for himself. You know, when you're excited in marriage, tell your husband, I'll do everything. Don't clean anymore. Amen. Even today, from that first year when we got married, I told the pastor, I give him food. I, I make sure there's a tray, there's a special tray that I use for his food. Whenever I finish eating, I go take that tray. It doesn't take it to the sink. I'm the one that takes it to the sink. So even today, whether I'm home or I'm not home, I'll hear the kids complaining, ah, Papa is very spoiled. doesn't even want to take his tray to the sink. Amen. So what am I saying? He doesn't even know how to clean the house anymore because I told him that I will take that role. So those are the things that makes people to fight. You find that you taught your man that don't clean, I will clean. So now when you go to work, you come back that the house is not clean, you become angry. What were you doing for the whole day? You are the one who taught him that he must not clean. Man takes instruction from a woman and respect the decision of a woman to say that she will come back and clean the house. Now when I get home, I know for sure that I'll find the house the way I left it. I just make peace with it to say, you know what? Let me start by removing everything from work. Now it's time for COVID. I just make sure I wash my hands. I take a bath. Then after when I'm done, I make sure that I prepare the house and clean and start cooking and everything that I'm supposed to do as a woman. Don't shift your role and give it to a man. Even when the man is not going to work, hallelujah, there are certain things that a man can do, but there are things that they cannot do. I will give you this simple 
simple example. There was a day when um, my nanny did not come back to work. And I said that I'm going to leave the pastor with the child. Amen. <laughs> and I left the pastor with the child. The pastor does not even know how to use the pampas because we don't teach them sometimes. You know, we take our role as women to say, I will do it. Pastor has to call me from work. I don't even know how to put the pampas. Come on, do you do it? Must I go to Google? <laughs> you know, but I really, really did appreciate because he tried to say, you know what? Go to work. I'll stay with the baby. You go to work now. Ah, you know, in my workplace, we have been given permission to say during this time of COVID, you'll come on this particular day. So on but that particular day, he was not going to work. So what am I saying? Get to know your partner. What is it that they're good at? Amen. Don't get to the house and say, you're useless. Each and every time you just put your shoes here. Hallelujah. When you're a woman, you know, your husband likes putting his shoes. Make peace with it. You know, every day just going to come back, find the shoes there. Take the shoes, put them where they belong. Amen. Don't be angry and hold grudges. This man knows, no. He, this woman does not know what to do. One, two, three. Amen. Don't be angry at the woman. You must make peace. The Bible says laughter is like medication. Sometimes laugh about it. You know what? I have noticed something. You can't be able to take it. Don't be sarcastic and say, I've noticed something. You can't even take your shoes to your bedroom. No, no, no. You must get to know your husband. There are men who are lazy or sometimes they work hard. All they need is for you to take off their shoes, take off their sock. Ah, now I won't be able to do that. I'm from this. Ah, that would be too much. Prophetess, for me to take off a man's shoes, I won't be able to do that. Those are the things, you know, you know, things that pleases men. Treat a man like a child, you know. Treat a man like a child. Tell him how special he is in your life. Hallelujah. Treat him like a king in the house. Amen. I always make the women laugh at the church to say that when pastor is busy with his PhD, I always make sure I buy custard, I buy fruits. When he's busy, I put it there. I take Take it to him, hallelujah, so that when he graduates, he does not forget that my wife was there. She was kind enough, you know, she was doing one to, I pamper him so that even when he's successful, he remember that my wife was there. So what am I saying? As a woman, be there for your men and believe in your husband because we don't have one and the same thing. Sometimes your husband can say, baby, I feel stressed in the job that I'm doing now. I feel like I should leave my job. And then when you leave your job, what are we going to eat? Amen. Sometimes you must just first start by asking, baby, what do you want to leave your job? Do you feel like the man will be enough for us if it's me working alone? Can I be able to take care of one, two, three? Then if you leave your job without another job, what are you planning? Amen. Mara, if you don't give a gently answer, that's what I'm saying. The Bible says a gently answer. It's good for the mid, for the body. It's good for your health. Amen. Some people, they don't even know how to speak. You know, when someone come with a vision to say, I was thinking I must start my business. With what? With what? For that matter, you're not even working. I don't even know what you want to start with. Oh, you're saying I must go take a loan. Is that what you're saying? The man has not even started. Maybe he has the money from his mother. Maybe he has got the plan. He don't even wait. The Bible says be quick to listen, but be slow to respond. There are some women when a man is still talking, you're busy answering. Sometimes you answer different things. You know how we are as women. But what am I saying? Things that please one another is when we give each other spaces, when we get to know one another. What is it that makes my partner happy? Amen. Like us women, do not keep yourself too much busy. You neglect the most important part in marriage. Say, no, I'm not here for sex. There are a lot of things that we can do. We can read books. You know, us women of these days who are educated, uh, even when you're not educated or, or, or whatever, but you know how we are these days, young people. You know how we are. Hey, you can read books. We can candle. We can do it. No, 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 no. The book of Acts says you must fulfill your responsibility. These are the things that pleases one another. You know, when a man, you're busy cooking in a stove, he comes from your back. What are you doing? I'm still cooking. No, switch off the stove, girl. Just switch off the stove. You fulfill your responsibility as a woman. When you're done, you'll come back and cook again. No man will be harsh on you to say, he didn't finish cooking. No, he knows. He's the one that has stopped you from cooking. Some of us who don't even know how to prioritize things. You find that a man comes from work, busy. The Bible says there's time for everything. When a man comes from work, he needs your attention. Amen. Plan your time to say, I'll be praying. If you know your husband knocks off at 4 o'clock, why continue pray at 4 o'clock and disturb the family life? 
Amen. When it's four o'clock, no, my husband is coming home. He's going to need my attention. He might need water. He might need clothes when he come back from work because normally they want to change from work. You know, you need to know those type of things. And the Bible says a woman must never say no in the bedroom. It says, we you know what what it says in the book of Corinthians chapter seven. It says your body is no longer your boat. Hallelujah. Meaning a man can do whatever he wants with your body, and you can also do the same. His body. Is no longer his body, but it belongs to you. There are some women, you know, when a man tries something new, you're like, What are you doing? Where did you learn that from? Amen. Now you see, we are raising conflict and not giving a gently answer there. Let's always give a gently answer, baby. I like what we're doing. You know, tonight it was different. You up up your game, and this was special. Hallelujah. Don't say, Yes, he, he men explore, men talk, women talk as well. Don't say, No, no, I think you are you're hitting the, for the road of destruction. You want to cheat, ne? that's why you're coming up with these new things. No, it's like when a man takes you to a restaurant where you have never been. That's don't get then be angry and frowning. Ah, Papa will never know this restaurant. Missy came here with someone. Yes, things are being introduced to us by people. Amen. I can go with my colleagues to a particular place. When I come home, like my husband, he likes it. When I know if, if he, he has learned about something new, he likes taking me. I'll have a surprise for you this weekend. And I know ah, somebody to be there, maybe the boss or somebody else. Don't be angry. You miss out on beautiful things. You find they take you to a hotel. Now you're upset. Where did you get to learn about this hotel? Hmm? Who showed you this hotel? Hey. Because I know by your standard, you wouldn't know the hotel such as this. No, 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 go and enjoy yourself and laugh. You know, when you're happy, not pretending. Even as this hotel is so wonderful, no wonder who showed you the hotel. I thank them, you know. You hear a lot of things. Ah, it was get Ruth. Get Ruth, she showed me this hotel. But if you're frowning, you get there, you don't want to do anything, you don't want to perform in the bedroom, you know, you, you just want to sit because you are angry, they're showing you a new place. It's not always the case for you'll be the one to introduce new things to your husband. Amen. Sometimes they might come home and say, baby, I've learned something, you know, instead of you uh, uh, frying the eggs, you know, uh, uh, like you do with oil, I think we should uh, you know, uh, try uh, uh, scrambled eggs. Don't say, scrambled eggs, we learned it from where? Because from the time when I married, you have been doing eggs like this. No, no, no. Allow each other to explore and do new things and teach one another new things. That's what pleases us in marriage. Sometimes, you know, even when it's not someone's birthday, buy them something. You know, as women, even if you can go to Mr. Price to buy me earrings for five red, I'm telling you I'm going to match those earrings up. Why? Because it comes from my man. Tomorrow morning, if you came with it today, tomorrow morning I'm going to wear it. As a woman, when they bring a gift and say, where did you get this cheap earring? Five rand? No, no, no. You take it and wear it. There are times when we don't even like what they buy sometimes, you know. <laughs> there are times when they buy us things, they're like... Ah, Mara, you know what? The fact that someone thought of you and to buy you something, you rather appreciate, you know, and take that thing as a gift and you work on it. But next time you tell it them in a nice way, you know what? I don't like white flowers per se. Next time, you know what? I can love, baby. I think you also can add red roses a little bit, you know. This time, just to spice up, you know, bring red roses at home. Don't just be frowning. What would I do with white, white, white roses? Can't you see this is for the funeral? Next time when they see flowers, they will pass and not buy for you because you, you don't know how to appreciate. Hallelujah. The man is trying to please you by buying you flowers. Then you become angry for the whole day. The Bible says you allow to be angry, but not for the whole day. Amen. Not for the whole day. Not for the whole day. You must not be angry for the whole day. Say when it's sunset, you must have resolved whatever issues that you have with your husband. Another thing, respect your husband, no matter what. Whether he's educated or he's not educated, respect him. He is your husband. Show him love. Show him love. You have a way on how you speak to one another. Amen. Even even when you see go in the bedroom, my husband is not one person. Um, you know, I had a friend, Karen is white. Uh, you know, I'm black. Hallelujah. <laughs> Karen is my friend. She's she's just white. So normally when what I will see from her and her husband, each time when they see each other, they laugh, they kiss their hands. And my husband comes from the village. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I try to tell him, for, you know, Karen, when they when she's with her husband, kiss the arm. And I'm trying to pass the message indirectly. Can't you? 
And my husband is like, you know me by now. <laughs> I'm not the one who can do that in public. Hallelujah. <laughs> because I'm shy by nature. So it's good to know your husband. If you see people kissing in public and you know your husband is not someone who can kiss you in public, don't do it. Hallelujah. Don't do it. <laughs> because the man will be embarrassed. You try to run after a man trying to give them the mouth and they're running. Now you're offended. Now you're embarrassed in front of people. Get to know your partner, what they can do in public and what they cannot do in public. Amen. So it's also, also important because couples are not the same. There are those ones who love kissing. Hallelujah. There are those who, yes, we do love, we enjoy kissing, but my husband is not a public person like myself, you know. Even when we walk in public, he wants dignity. I'm one person that is loud in a marriage. I can see someone from the next street, I'll be like, hi, hi, Shelly. And my husband like, eh, eh, this is not the village. Eh, eh, it must be, it's a suburb, hallelujah. <laughs> Cannot call someone from far, hallelujah. <laughs> As if you are in a place where you are getting firewood to say, hey, come this side, there's not a firewood on this side. And then says, it, you must see, you know, I know when I work with the pastor, I must be professional. Amen. <laughs> I must be professional. Why? Because that's what pleases him as a man. Even when we go to the restaurant, I know I need to be professional. I must use my fork and knife. Doesn't like this thing of licking the fingers. <laughs> No, 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 money must be professional. Must be professional. So I know my husband is a perfectionist. So also yourself, what am I saying? Know your partner. What is it that your partner is good at? Sometimes when you're attending a funeral, you know your husband cannot go and get food for himself. Like myself, I know I, if it's a funeral, I have to take two plates for myself and for my husband. Hallelujah. So you need to know that if you are visiting your family, you know, men are shy. They cannot just quickly rush, go to the kitchen. I'm saying the one with order. You know, if it's your mother's house, they cannot quickly go to the kitchen, do whatever as they please. Sometimes when you get there, make sure your husband get food and everything else. What am I trying to say? Get to know your husband. What is it that is good at? So that's why some men end up being bored. They end up reading the newspaper. You find that now you are lonely. Don't put your husband on a silent mood. Don't put your husband on a silent mood. I'm upset. I don't want to talk to my husband. You find that there are only two in that house. You're only laughing at the TV or you're talking to your children. You are not there for your children but for your husband and to please him in every way. Amen. When your husband says, I don't like this particular hairstyle, I say, I'm going to do it anyway whether you like it or not. Brazilian is in style. I says, no, no, no. I want you to plait your hair like straight back. Ah, listen, listen. I get you are trying to play. You are jealous because I'm going to work. People are going to see me with this hair. No, 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 no. Try and listen and find out, baby, what don't you like? Uh, long hair. And then you listen, you get to hear. Okay, it's because of one, two, three. Then now, if you do what he says, I'm telling you, if you do what your husband tells you to do, he will have no matter that I'm telling you. That's one thing I've seen working for us in this marriage. 17 years of marriage, I'm telling you. We are still young. My husband will be turning 40 this year. Mm, we are still young, but we have passed the mark of being young. <laughs> we'll be turning 40. I'll be turning 37. When I got married, I was 20. I was 90. But don't tell my daughter. Eh? Don't tell my daughter. But from that time, you know, the Bible says, greater is he that is on the inside of me than the one that is in the world. Another thing that has made my marriage to work that I want to share, I pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead me. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Don't listen to all the magazines. It's good to read books. It's good to read everything else. But you have been left with the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes you are reading about a man that is not even from uh, your culture or from your tribe. They tell you how they want to be respected. Some, they need you to kneel. You find that according to the culture of a particular person, they don't do those things. So what am I saying? Ask the Holy Spirit. There's no one who knows your husband better than the Holy Spirit. For me, when my husband has a problem, I know, I know I can tell. Now he had, he had a rough day at work. He doesn't have to tell me. I can see. I can see from a distance. So what am I saying? Know your husband. And also know yourself as a woman. Know yourself and also pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as a young mother. Ask the Holy Spirit. The, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Ask the Holy Spirit to help me to maintain my joy in this house. Help me to please my husband. Amen. Pray for everything. Some people say we can pray for everything, but we can't pray for our private parts. We can't pray for that and that. We pray for everything. We don't leave the stone unturned. Hallelujah. We don't want the devil to come out. 
even ask him, Holy Spirit, help me to be romantic towards my husband. He will teach you how to be romantic towards your husband. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a blessed day.